I went through like seven different layers of like security and bodyguard, each one like larger and taller than the last. And they would all just look me up and down and then go, yeah, all right, go on. It was so weird. And then I got in and I got to meet, I got to meet Stevie Wonder. Hey guys, my name's Jack Garrett. Apparently I'm in my bathrobe uh, and you're watching Tour Stories. My best show ever would probably be the two nights that I played the Hammersmith Apollo. It was such an amazing environment. It was such an incredible energy to be there with my, at the time my fiance um, had flown home to surprise me. They hid her from me by hiding her in a giant cardboard box um, that was sitting in the corner of my green room. And I came in and then in the corner was this rustling and out popped my, uh, my fiance, which was really, really amazing. I did a Spotify Grammys party that Katy Perry was hosting. And that night, I remember the following things happened. Ariana Grande called me her best friend. While I was playing, Sia came up to the very front of the stage and just stared at me the whole time with tears pouring down her eyes. It was the most intense experience ever, but incredible because she's a beautiful soul. Missy Elliott, after I walked off stage, came up to me and hugged me and um, whispered incredible affirmations into my ear. And as my British guilt kicked in and I tried to push away from the hug, she held me closer. That was also the same night that I met the guys from Muse and they ended up offering me support on their upcoming European tour. So that was a pretty intense and celebrity filled night. My weirdest fan experience, I remember doing a show in, it's either Birmingham or Manchester. And at the end of it, I was doing meet and greets and, and someone came up and, and they were obviously quite like uh, emotionally nervous. He, came, he comes up and he tells me that he'd lost uh, about two years of his, his memory. What happened was when he was recovering, he was told to go back over his purchases and see if there's anything that could help trigger memories again. And he saw that he'd bought some tickets for this artist or this person, Jack Garrett, and he went on Spotify and started listening to some of my music and the opening tune, the opening vocal of The Love You Given The Sample immediately made him remember something. It's utterly insane. I, I once played a uh, concert in celebration of Adam Clayton, the bassist from U2, and uh, everyone who was playing had to do a U2 cover, um, and the whole of U2 were there. Oh yeah, and Kat Dealey was hosting the whole thing, so she was there and, and got to meet her, which was pretty amazing. And then we all went back to Bono's place afterwards, and it was the funniest evening of my life, because we all crammed into one giant car, and there were like eight of us sat in the back that was supposed to fit four people, or like six people or something. And and Bono spent the whole drive playing new music uh, that he and the, the guys were making. But he didn't know how to like use the aux cable. So there was this like awkward bit where he was trying to plug it in and the music wasn't coming out and then it did. And he was just like slamming on the roof, just like getting into his own music is the most inspiring thing I've ever seen. A guy who was just so, so like, into what he had made that he was just like, first of all, you're gonna listen to it. Second of all, I don't care if you enjoy it because I do. Yeah, and he then art directed a photo um, that me, my wife and him took. It was on, it was in the balcony of Bono's place in New York and uh, it overlooks, um, you know, the New York skyline and it's utterly gorgeous, the view. My manager being my manager was like, hey, let's get a picture of this. And so he took it with a flash, which was immediately the wrong decision uh, because Bono then took the camera, changed all the settings, gave it back to my manager who then took the photo again. And the photo now is me, my wife and Bono silhouetted against a backdrop of a New York City skyline. It's one of my favorite photos that I have. The Stevie Wonder story is so embarrassing. I, I met Stevie Wonder at a festival that I was playing at that he was also playing at and through an unnecessary amount of strings being pulled, I got to meet him. I went through like seven different layers of like security and bodyguard, each one like larger and taller than the last. And they would all just look me up and down and then go, yeah, all right, go on. It was so weird. And then I got in and I got to meet, I got to meet Stevie Wonder.
And I'm pretty sure Gregory Porter was just sitting in the corner as well. And then I walked in and had the most embarrassing and awkward conversation of my entire life with a man who, who heard that apparently I was so good at playing the guitar, he invited me to play Superstition with him that night. And I, being too embarrassed and British, said, no, you're all right, mate. Ugh. I then hugged him as I left and, and as I left I said um, I've been such a huge fan of yours for so long and I just have to say this is so this is so f***ing crazy and he said oh man you can't you can't say it's f***ing crazy and I was like oh god I've just sworn in front of Stevie Wonder I don't know if that's a thing I'm supposed to or not supposed to do and he went no you can't say it's f***ing crazy you can say it's mother f***ing crazy and laughed and then I died and I have been dead ever since I want people to I want people to leave feeling like they've gotten through something that was dangerous. My show could go wrong at any point and I want people to know that. I want people to know it's not perfect even though I strive for perfection. I want people to feel like they are witnessing an intimate performance every night. So I've been and will be for the rest of my life Jack Garrett. Um, that was uh, Tour Stories, the uh, Pixar movie on bread.